Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Are we recording? Uh, Kenny, at this point in time, I actually, Mike will take over the lead and we will recognize you in just a moment. Uh, but because uh, okay. of how elections <laughs> fell, Mike has to take that on. So if you'll just kind of fade for just a moment, we'll bring you back in. Okay. All right. It's different than we've always done. I apologize for that. I should have said that this morning. That's quite all right. All right, so I welcome everybody to a special virtual meeting. Sorry about that, Kenny. Um, uh, for Deer Creek Public Schools, uh, Kirk, would you please call the call to order and do the roll call, please? Sure. Keen. Here. Neves here. Lay here. Barnes here. Bamford here. The time all are present, and the time is six thirty-one. Okay, and now um, we're going to typically we do this in a setting where we kind of recite, but we're going to have Lori, she has the oath of office in front of her. We're going to have her read that. So uh, go ahead, Lori, if you'll read that for us, please. Great. I, Lori Bamford, hereby declare under oath that I will faithfully perform the duties as a member of the Deer Creek Board of Education of Independent School District number I 006 of Oklahoma County, Oklahoma to the best of my ability, and that I will faithfully discharge all of the duties pertaining to said office and obey the constitution and laws of the United States and Oklahoma. Okay, thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Good to have you on board. Thank you. All right, so now we'll go to uh, C, reorganization of the Board of Education pursuant to Oklahoma statute title 70 0 dot zero section five dash one one nine i make a motion to elect mike keen as president second neves yes barnes yes keen yes you vote? Sure. leg yes bamford yes motion carries five zero I make a motion to nominate Andy Neves as vice president. I'll second that. Lay? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Keene? Yes. Neves, yes. Bamford? Yes. Thank you. For secretary, I nominate uh, Kelly Lay for the next two years for, for secretary. <laughs> now for next year. <laughs> that was just me. <laughs> I'll second that. Barnes? Yes. Neves? Yes. Keen? Yes. Lay? Yes. Bamford? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Take it away, Kelly. I will make a motion to elect Danny Barnes as deputy clerk. Second. Bamford? Yes. Lay? Yes. Keen? Yes. Neves? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Uh, motion carries 5 0. All right, here we go. Uh, next is letter uh, D consideration of and vote on consent agenda items. All of the following items, which concern reports and items of a routine nature, normally approved at board meetings will be approved by one vote unless any board member desires to have a separate vote on any or all of these items. The consent agenda consists of discussion, consideration, and approval of the following items. Uh, one is Board of Education minutes. Two, schedule of encumbrances, A through F. Three, financial reports. Four, student open transfers to 2020-2021. Five, DC cheer out-of-state travel to Dallas in January. Six, sanctioning request for 2020-2021 school year for Coral Booster Club and fourth and fifth grade center PTO. 
seven general mutual cooperation agreement between Deer Creek Public Schools and the Board of County Commissioners of Oklahoma County for the fiscal year 2021. High school textbook surplus number nine contract between Deer Creek Public Schools and Francis Tuttle Technology for transportation for 2020 to 2021 school year. And number 10 uh, contract between Deer Creek Public Schools and Everyday Excellence LLC for administrator coaching for the 2020 2021 school year. We have any comments or concerns about any of uh, one through 10? If not, uh, do we have a motion to approve one through 10? I move to approve the consent agenda items one through 10. Second. Neves? Yes. Lay? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Sorry. Keene? Yes. Bamford? Yes. Motion carried 5 0. Great job, Kelly. Good job. Good job. <laughs> uh, next Great. one is letter E. Uh, Superintendent Renette Tippins report. Okay, and for those of you watching, whenever they do the clerk and whatever you step in, getting everyone in the right order is always the big challenge. And uh, Andy did have to do that for two years. So she did get two wonderful years of calling roll on every vote that we ever took. So uh, we have a little fun for, with that from time to time as we work mm -hmm. through that. Mm -hmm. First of all, I would like to start off by complimenting several of our team members, and, and uh, there are so many that deserve complimenting. Um, I won't get them all this time, but hopefully over the course of the next two or three meetings, we will talk a little bit about uh, the work that's been being done. I looked back, and it was either March 11th or March 12th when we went into what I call full-time around-the-clock Zoom meetings that we had never done before with all of our administrators and and cabinet members. Uh, first and foremost, I, I would like to compliment Dr. Jones and her team for working day and night, for getting us through the spring, uh, building that airplane in the air for virtual teaching and uh, trying to comply with all of the rules and regulations, both federally and on a state level, which gave great limitations to what we were able to do at that time. So. Uh, they built a plane in the air or they took a drink from Niagara Falls. I'm not sure what you want to call it, but they did it well and did it with a great skill. And I would like to say great ease, although I think they would tell you that they were working truly into the midnight hours and back at it at 5 and 6 a.m. And today, <laughs> over the course of the summer, the minute we came close to the close of school, we realized we had to have a blended virtual option and we met with staff members and community members and chose Canvas and they immediately began forming our new virtual learning program, which is very different from the spring. It's going to have a lot of the options that parents had wanted in the spring. So parents, if you're watching, I want you to know that what virtual learning and blended learning will look like will be very different, that there will be a lot more in terms of interaction of staff with students, as well as a lot of the interactive projects that we will be able to offer. Our uh, technology team and our finance team immediately went into how do we begin to provide those devices so that we can do that and we continue to work on that. So uh, my compliments to them for the work that they've done and the work that they continue to do to make us ready to open in August. Um, want to really give a shout out to Lena. She's often behind the scenes quietly working, um, but we have tremendous changes in HR based on the new laws for COVID. And she has worked around the clock to see that we have a lot of those surveys and documents in place ahead of time. And I think, as you can see, Deer Creek was one of the first to put out our first return to learn. Uh, to families and to staff members, you're going to see new surveys coming out this week uh, that will again cause some changes as well as some guidance as we go forward. And, and she's that person behind the scenes that keeps kind of throwing it all together and then say, bringing us all together to run down through those. Uh, Jeff Johnson with operations and James in finance and all of their teams, um, they've been setting up a new school. They've been making moves. They've done lots and lots of cleanings. They're purchasing equipment, supplies and PPE for our staff and that's a constant study as to what we do next and what we need to provide. And again, um, some of them 
James on vacation last week. There were several Zoom calls that he joined us in order for us to be able to make some of those decisions. Dr. Rose and Student Services trying to meet all of the individual needs of our students as well as the social and emotional needs. Uh, he has groups of people, his teams that are too working around the clock to make sure that as we enter the fall that we do an even better job of reaching out to our families. They did a great job. Our school sites uh, did a wonderful job of making sure that we had contacts with students each week, trying to make sure that everyone was well, but they are worth putting in a lot of programs, both for staff and students to ensure that we care for them as we go through these crazy unprecedented times. Uh, to all of our principals, um, many of them were on today as we began to Zoom, or not began to Zoom, we've been Zooming 24-7. Um, but they, they joined us many, many times while they are supposedly on a bit of a vacation in order for us to plan and prepare. And, and truly, we can't make the decisions for how sites will look and run without their expertise. So a huge shout out, just a huge shout out to all of our administrators, as well as our teacher leader teams that have given us a tremendous amount of input over the course of the summer. We have a tremendous amount of teacher leaders that are working on what instruction will look like for fall and being ready to mentor their peers so that we have that ready and up and running on the first day of school. So I can't tell you the countless hours beyond what you think of a, as a contract day, whether they be administrators, teachers, uh, board members, you've joined us in groups of two on many of our planning sessions. So again, I would shout out to you and say thank you for that. And Catherine, who's on here, you see Catherine, she's my assistant. She would have to tell you that there've been a, quite a few things of, oh, can we get this letter out? And we work from 10 o'clock to midnight to make sure it's in the email boxes for the next morning, unfortunately. Uh, I'm trying to do better at that, Catherine, but there's just so many people to thank and probably not enough time. But I want the public to know that your staff, teachers, administrators, support personnel, board members have been working around the clock and pretty much since March 11th, most of them without vacations, without weekends, without nights. So I just want to say thank you for that. Now I want to move to um, a huge thank you to a gentleman who has served us well uh, for, I believe, is it Kenny, two terms? I need a nod. I'm not looking at the, the plaque, so I'm not looking at it. How many years have you served on the board, Kenny? Uh, 10 years. 10 years. That's what I was going to say, but I, I just needed that nod. Um, but it is with great respect and great love that we celebrate Kenneth Dennis tonight. So I'm going to turn this to Joshua Pierce and let him move through a little slideshow celebration. Okay, yeah, if you'll give me just one moment, I need to make sure things are displaying the way they should be. Uh, is the glimpse behind the curtain, I apologize. There we go, okay. So I'm going to, I will step through the slides and I'm going to read some quotes that were provided by our board members about Mr. Dennis um, in gratitude for his service with Deerfield Public Schools. So, Kenneth Dennis, thank you for your 10 years of service and dedication to the Deer Creek Schools Board of Education from March 2010 to July 2020. I first met Kenny Dennis at a long range planning meeting for Deer Creek Schools about 12 years ago. His knowledge about architecture and planning were so impressive that the other board members asked him to consider running for the school board. Kenny brought to the board the most important aspect that any board member can bring to a school no personal agenda other than doing what's best for all kids in the district. His demeanor, his thoughtful responses, and his vision for Deer Creek are the basis for the continued success of this district the past 10 years. Kenny, you will be missed. Danny Barnes. Thank you, Kenny, for all the countless hours of selfless service to our district, our teachers and staff, and most importantly, to our Deer Creek students. Your impact will never be forgotten. Thank you. Andy Neves. Kenny, thank you so much for your commitment to bettering Deer Creek Schools. You are humble and kind. I will miss your calm presence 
and common sense approach to issues. All the best, Kelly Lay. Thanks, Kenny, for your commitment and dedication over the last five years. I've enjoyed working with you. Mike King. Kenny, on behalf of the Board of Education and on behalf of all of the members of Deer Creek Schools and the students, we wanna say thank you. Your service has been an incredible benefit to all of us here in Deer Creek. Uh, you've always been there to answer that phone call or that question and give guidance. I don't care if we were talking about dress codes or if we're talking about construction. Uh, your input was very valuable to us and, and we treasure it. As I tell you most, and I've told you over the phone, um, you may not be on the board, but your phone number is still in my phone. So unfortunately for you and fortunately for me, that keeps you as an advisor to our district. And I know that you graciously said that you were willing to continue to give us that wonderful advice that we've had over the past 10 years. So Kenny, are there any things that you would like to share? Well, Renette, <clears throat> excuse me. I would just like to say that uh, uh, 10 years, man, it's hard to believe that 10 years have gone by. Uh, time flies when you're having fun, right? And uh, I, I would just say that it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve the district. And uh, it's also been an educational <laughs> opportunity for myself to learn, you know, all, all the things that uh, teachers, administrators do in a school district, uh, all the things that are required and, and uh, what little resources that you all have available in order to, to get those things done so that our, our children, our, our students in our district can have those opportunities to learn and, and succeed and uh, be ready for whatever life uh, adventures they have after they graduate from high school, whether it's college, the job, the military, uh, tech school training. Um, I think, you know, I've, I've got three kids, two have graduated from Deer Creek, two boys, and my daughter will be a junior this next year. And uh, my wife and I have nothing but, you know, gratitude and great things to say about the district. You guys have prepared our, our sons well uh, for what they're doing. And, and uh, you know, we're just blessed and thankful to be able to, to be a part of the district. And uh, I really also like to say I've enjoyed uh, getting to know each and every board member. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes on uh, behind the scenes and I appreciate everybody's uh, help and and then lastly, I would say, again, just for the parents that are listening tonight, um, the administrators of Deer Creek, the faculty, the teachers, uh, we are definitely blessed with a wonderful set of people, a wonderful group of people that have nothing but the best interest of, of our children in, at heart and, and, and at the forefront of what they do. And they work so hard and diligently and tirelessly for our kids to be successful. So... Thank you all for what you do each and every day. And uh, I just, I wish you all the best of luck. I know this uh, starting up, starting up the new school year is always challenging and exciting, but this one is going to be uh, doubly challenging, maybe even <laughs> quadruply challenging, but I know you guys will uh, be very successful and, and we'll have a successful year. So thank you. Okay, Kenny. Um, and, and don't yeah. forget, you have my number. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm not going to turn any... less of it. And I, w I do want to say his whole family has been an integral part of our Deer Creek family and team. And they have joined us on many, many events. And we want to say thank you to your whole family for sharing you, but also for coming and being a part of our big family as we've done things together. So a huge thank you to every member of your family. And we're very proud of the work they've done, very proud of your boys, very proud of your daughter and look forward to seeing what she does as she completes her time here. Um, at this time, I would like for everyone that's on the cabinet to all click your pictures on because we normally take a picture at the front of the room, but we're going to, Lennis is going to take a picture of everyone here so if I give me, I'm, I'm watching for everybody's little click on. If you can click your face on, we would love that. 
uh, I like about three, it looks like. Um, we would like to, there's Dr. Rose, thank you very much. We're still clicking away here. I think I'm down to one and I can't tell who it is. Um, but Linus, do you want that's me to go the, on the count? The, the correct is the um, YouTube one. So I think we have everybody on. Perfect. So Perfect. normally I would take a picture of the crowd and this is how we're just gonna have to do it. So I need everyone to smile. <laughs> Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Okay, if we'll go back to the board members on camera. Again, Kenny, thank you. And we'll probably be talking to you as soon as tomorrow. But thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate you. All right, thank you. Y'all have a good thank evening. You. Thanks. You too. Okay, next on our uh, superintendent's report, we have Mr. Stephen Buck, our new principal of our Deer Creek Blended Learning and Alternative Academy. So, Mr. Buck, if you would join us for a moment and share a little bit about the Deer Creek Academy. You bet. Thank you. It's nice to see everybody tonight. Whoops. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, leading this school. Uh, we started talking about the Virtual Blended Learning Center uh, well before the pandemic. Uh, and we were hoping that we were gonna be able to fill a need in our district. We saw more and more students seeking other options, alternatives to a traditional school setting. And our ability to offer that to our patrons will allow them to have that flexibility in scheduling while still remaining part of our Deer Creek family. Um, we figured we'd have somewhere about 60 to 80 kids that would be interested, focused mostly on secondary. And then uh, after the pandemic came, at my last count this morning, I've had over 387 students request uh, access into the academy. So I've been working diligently, going through these uh, surveys, pulling students, uh, families in, visiting with them. I started doing my intake surveys earlier this week and have gotten through several of them and have them scheduled over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we did start off by reaching out to students that had left Deer Creek in the past couple of years for online programs just to let them know that we have this exciting opportunity right here at Deer Creek. Uh, we used a Google form survey to gather interested families and that's like I said we uh, we didn't know how many we would get once the, the the pandemic started though our numbers escalated and they continue to grow daily so I'm spending my time filtering through those uh, getting the information uh, and sending out emails and then visiting with families in preparation for this coming school year. Um, we are um, using Edmentum uh, for our, our academy. We piloted this with three Deer Creek students last year. We had a lot of positive feedback on the program. Uh, one of those students was Darcy Farmer. I spoke with her mom the other day and they're excited that this is going to continue and that we're offering this to uh, all of our patrons. And uh, she just reiterated to me how much they thought that the Edmentum program was really um, a, a, good, a good program for them. Uh, we're gonna be bringing the credit recovery students into the academy as well. These are students who need to recover lost credit if they uh, did not pass a course. And we also have students that will move into the district uh, oftentimes from out of state and they'll need uh, credit such as Oklahoma history that they haven't had. So this being our first year, it looks like it's gonna have a lot more interest than we initially anticipated, but we're we're, we're ready, we're working on it, we're getting through this. Uh, we hope to eventually bring in some summer school programs to allow for that credit recovery to happen over the summertime so students can uh, stay on track to graduate on time. And then uh, eventually we hope to also add an alternative program as well for those students who need that different setting but still need to come into the school site. So I'm excited, I'm very, very busy these days going through all this information. And um, I love that Renette always says we're building a plane while it's in the air. That's definitely what we're doing. We're flapping our wings as fast as we can and trying to stay afloat. But um, we got a lot of interest. And I think that in light of the current situation, it's really a very timely, wonderful opportunity that we're providing for our Deer Creek families. And I want to thank the board, especially for being supportive of this program. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm very excited to get this going and start having students enrolled in our program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Uh, appreciate that. And he has, he's been working another one of those working around the clock uh, with his staff to get this rolling. Uh, so the hours that one might assume that they have 
have certainly not been what we thought initially. We did know that he would have a lot of work to do, but as the plane has changed, we're now, I don't understand and know what bigger planes are. I'm just gonna say a 747 versus a little prop engine. And we started out with a prop and we're, we're moving to a 747. So, uh, but they're doing an excellent job. We're excited about the programs. We were fortunate to have some students testing them out ahead of time. And so we feel like we have excellent feedback as to the quality of the program. The one thing I want parents to know is that Deer Creek's virtual program and Deer Creek's blended learning program are all guided by Deer Creek employees, Deer Creek teachers, Deer Creek standards. And so the standards that will be chosen to be taught that that child will go through will be the standards that we know are most critical for them to move on to that next level in their education. So I want you to know as compared to a lot of things out there, you are going to get the best of teachers and the best of programs and it will all be aligned to state and national standards. So hang with us, check it out. Contact Mr. Buck if you are interested. We are very excited about both the virtual and blended learning programs that we have to offer your children. So thank you for that. I want to move now into another celebration. Burnett, of, can, I, yes. can I ask a question? Yes. Is there a, cap, is there a cap on the number of students that can do that or just anybody who wants to can sign up to it or? They can request it. They have to, to go through the interview it. process. We look at we look at their history and their background, and there's several things. That Mr. Buck will meet with them and call them and talk with them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what takes him a little while. We have an intake process for those programs, and we want to make sure that it's a perfect fit. So we talk about whether it's traditional, virtual, or blended, and all of the opportunities out there, and then they try to seek the most perfect fit for each child. But there's not a cap on total numbers. Uh, we may be moving some teachers from classroom instruction into virtual instruction. And that's where we're trying to get a feel right now on numbers. numbers is some of our teachers that have taught traditionally may be those same ones that we move over into teaching virtually through the academy. And is that that 387 number, is that blended or just strictly virtual? Um, that's, it's a mix as I've gone through, uh, there's a lot of kids, especially at, uh, our grade seven through 12, where they want that blended option so that they continue to participate in athletics, choir, drama, um, where, but it's a mix of blended and virtual. I think so far the families I've visited with have been predominantly a blended models, what they're seeking out, uh, to keep some contact with the school, keep their kids engaged with, uh, the community and their peers. Okay. Great questions. Are there any more questions? Wonderful questions. Okay, I want to move back now. I want, I want to do another celebration that we have tonight. Uh, we want to celebrate uh, those that have retired uh, from Deer Creek Schools. We normally do that in May. And as we have gone on, we kept thinking we would be back to a traditional format. Um, but that has not worked out uh, with the rising COVID. So we want to take a little time. I'm going to turn back over to Joshua Pierce and ask him to narrate a little slideshow recognizing three of our retirees this evening. Mr. Pierce. All righty. Uh, give me just one moment. Let me share the screen again. Let's move to presentation, and there we go. Okay, so again, we want to take this moment to recognize our 2020 Deer Creek retirees. Um, first, we will start with Miss Mary Gentry. Uh, Mary Gentry taught for 19 years in California before moving to Deer Creek, where she taught fourth grade for one year and third grade for nine years at Rose Union. In retirement, Mary has plans to travel to California and New York to celebrate both the completion of her teaching career and her 40th wedding anniversary. She also plans to do some part-time work to help and serve others. One of Mary's favorite memories of Deer Creek was during her interview when the announcements came over the intercom and the daily moment of science, silence was offered. It was explained that this was a time for students and staff to pause and pray, meditate or reflect. They paused the interview to participate in the moment. She was blown away by this and immediately knew Deer Creek was a special place. 
With the encouragement from her Deer Creek peers, Mary published her first children's book. In May of 2017, her dream of the Triangle Triplets became a reality. Next, we'd like to recognize Miss Bonnie Gull. Bonnie Gull spent 22 years at Deer Creek as an art and drama specialist and taught at Deer Creek High School, Prairie Vale, Deer Creek Middle School, and ultimately retired from Deer Creek Intermediate School. Bonnie was awarded Teacher of the Year at Deer Creek Middle School in 2005. In retirement, Bonnie looks forward to spending time with family, traveling, and working on projects. Her goal is to be creative and to always create. Some of Bonnie's most treasured memories at Deer Creek are celebrating art with her students during trips to New York City, attending award ceremonies for her students' accomplishments, seeing her drama productions come to life at Deer Creek Middle School, countless field trips to the Oklahoma City Zoo, and working with Ballet Oklahoma to introduce her students to the world of ballet. While at Deer Creek Middle School, Bonnie oversaw the installation of the mural pictured, which was a very unique project that inspired students to create original tiles that illustrated the historical timeline of the Deer Creek School District from 1907 to 2000. The mural was completed in 2005. And lastly, we'd like to celebrate Miss Mary Ann Kite. Mary Ann Kite served as the secretary for Rose Union from the time it opened in 2006 until 2020. In retirement, Mary Ann is enjoying staying up late and sleeping in even more. She is excited to have the opportunity to travel with her husband. Some of Mary Ann's favorite memories from her time at Rose Union were the Halloween parties and seeing all of the cute costumes and when Santa visited to take pictures with the kids. One very special memory was having the first year kindergartners come back for their senior clap out. Rose Union surprised Mary Ann with a very special retirement parade during the COVID-19 pandemic. Deer Creek, thanks you all. Thanks, thanks you for all of the time and love you poured into our students and schools. We wish you all the best in your retirement. So to Mary and Bonnie and Mary Ann, there are not enough thank yous, there are not enough words to describe our gratitude for all that you've done for the children of Deer Creek. Uh, you will have many rewards throughout your years. Uh, you will have many students contact you with their special memories and how you made a direct impact in their lives. Here at Deer Creek, we want to say thank you. Thank you so much for dedicating your lives to the children of our schools. We appreciate all that you've done. We wish you the very, very best in your travels and in your new endeavors. I hope we see more books written and more places visited and seen. So thank you again very much for your dedication to the children of Deer Creek Schools. We wish you the very best. Without any further ado, we will move on to our construction update, and that will be Jeff Johnson and Mr. James Edwards. Well, for a change, we're going to provide some good news from the finance part of this. So I hope, hope Dr. Barnes and everybody likes this for a change. So let me get this started. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Is everybody seeing that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we've accomplished several things through our 2016 uh, bond projects. Some of those were part of the proposed bonds. Um, and then there was a lot of additional projects that we were able to um, take on and several of those are finished, some are in, process, in the process, and then we have some that are, we're hoping for future projects that we'll kind of look at. Some of the initial bonds or initial projects of the bond was a second floor at the middle school, Spring Creek Elementary Classroom Edition, our elementary schools, which are fourth and fifth centers, which so finishing up. 
pack additions, which included band, choir, drama, our meeting and hospitality room, cheer, poem, and wrestling rooms, um, updates to our immediate intermediate classroom portables, which is now going to be the temporary home of our Deer Creek Academy. Track and turf replacement at the high school stadium. We just got the new turf in um, over uh, the winter break and we will install the new track in the coming years. Right now our track is still in good shape and there's no reason to pull it up. Um, and so we will get to that soon. Uh, elementary school secure entrances, technology center, roof repair, general district renovations, transportation, which we've uh, purchased a lot of white fleet activity buses and other student transportation. We still have several other uh, buses and other uh, transportation vehicles that we'll add through the year. So we're not finished with that, but we have several of those in place already. Technology, uh, we've done a lot of in infrastructure and devices, uh, land purchases for school sites. Um, additional projects, which we were able to accomplish utilizing bond funds that were for general um, district renovations and also coming in well under budget on several of our projects. So that's kind of how we were able to accomplish a lot of these. Uh, we did the Deer Creek Elementary Renovation, Prairie Bell Elementary Renovation, Intermediate Gym, Interior and Exterior Renovations, High School Stadium Video Scoreboard, Technology Center Renovation, and Operations Second Floor Renovation is currently uh, taking place. Uh, Grove Valley Wetlands Relocation, we were able to relocate that wetlands over there, which is going to allow us to add classrooms. Uh, the Enrollment Center at the high school. High School West renovation, uh, general cleanup and addition of concrete pathways and parking upgrades throughout the district, and some more land purchased throughout the district for future growth and school buildings. Um, some other projects we're hoping to look at, we've got Grove Valley Classroom Addition, which we were just approved at our last board meeting. We're open to do some renovations at Grove Valley. Uh, look at Spring Creek Elementary Additions, Intermediate School Renovations, and the Transition Center. So let me take you kind of through some of those and some pictures that we've uh, had taken throughout the district. Uh, land purchases, uh, we were able to purchase 119 acres at 206 and Meridian, 45 acres at 220th and Council, and <laughs> acres at 220th and MacArthur. The latter two will be for future school sites as well as the uh, site where the fourth, fifth, there's enough room there to put another school. Uh, we put secure vestibules at Rose Union, Grove Valley, Deer Creek, and Prairieville. Uh, Deer Creek Elementary Edition. Some pictures there. It's also a storm shelter. Prairieville Elementary Edition. It's also a storm shelter. Spring Creek. The middle school, second story edition. Our cheer and palm and wrestling rooms, which also double as a storm shelter. And also we can do testing in each of those rooms. So they're set up to where we can, we can pull up the mats and we can put down some things and bring in some tables and test in all those rooms. So that they all give us three different purposes. Meeting room upstairs at the PAC uh, gives us this, uh, a good place for a lot of professional development, hospitality rooms, and also we can test up there. So again, we're, we were able to multi-purpose a lot of the different rooms in the PAC. Our band uh, room, uh, they outgrew the old band room, which we uh, made into the new choir room and then we also added the drama room over in the on the side of the pack. Turf replacement, if you haven't been able to get out there to see that since we've had so much going on you can kind of see the new turf as well as our video board. Uh, I don't know if everybody remembers it but there used to be a big hill on the side of our FEMA gym and it caused a lot of issues with water uh, and and flooding in there that was removed. A new outside basically was remodeled 
And then we also were able to remodel all the portable classrooms and renovate those. Looks a lot better. And Jeff and his team were able to get all that stuff, a lot of that stuff done in house, saving us a lot of funds. Our fourth and fifth grade centers. Uh, here's just a few pictures. Hopefully we'll be able to get over there soon to show everybody that. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful school. And uh, I think you'll be very proud of everything that'll be in there. Operations, there's some things over there that they've done. One of those is this storage areas that was uh, put together by our uh, operations teams, welded it, put everything up themselves. Our technology center renovation um, that has really been transformed into a, a very useful space um, for them to be able to bring in uh, new technology and store as well as the infrastructure is based out of that, that building. Security upgrades from our technology. Uh, got it where we can fob into all of our buildings. We've also got cameras at all of our entrances. So that helps secure a lot of our buildings. Transportation, we finally got our activity buses. Um, we were able to get four activity buses, uh, nine route buses, four special ed buses, a lot of transit vans and white fleet, as well as uh, new cameras and things for our buses. Uh, they're also in the process of adding some driver air conditioning to help take care of our drivers on those hot days. And um, those are, that's in a process right now. A lot of additional projects you may or may not have noticed, um, just made things a lot more convenient and cleaned up uh, the district as a whole. We had a lot of concrete additions uh, that were put in places where we had a lot of high traffic areas and, and there was a lot of dirt. Um, and so that those places went in our parking lots were resurfaced. Um, renovations throughout the district, a lot of paint has gone up the last couple of years, new lighting, uh, new floors, new bulls and boards and whiteboards throughout the district. There's a couple of new renovations that just took place this, this summer. A lot of people haven't been able to see these, uh, but a lot of this is going on over at the high school. Uh, getting some some art and science rooms uh, ready for the upcoming school year, as well as our student center. If you had saw that before, you would know the big difference that's uh, part of our student center now. I think it'll be a great place for our, our teachers and students to be able to have meetings. Our enrollment center uh, was uh, put together. The door there that you can see the enrollment center was actually a window uh, they changed that into the new entry over there so our community can have a good place to go and enroll and they're not getting packed into small offices anymore to do that. Deer Creek Elementary renovation. You see all the new lighting, uh, paint, and flooring in those, those rooms as well as the walls. Prairie Bell Elementary renovation. Same thing. Um, another thing that we took, we did, we're able to do over at Prairie Bell Elementary was the outside uh, paint, paint that, uh, the blue uh, that was around there is now a uh, darker uh, color. Um, it looks very good. Uh, that's our wetlands. That's something probably nobody will hardly ever notice, but it's actually going to be a, another outdoor classroom for our fourth and fifth grade center but that we uh, mitigated that from Grove Valley. Future projects, as I mentioned earlier, we've, we have some that we're, we're hoping to do. Grove Valley Classroom Edition and Transition Center are, are being uh, worked on right now to try to get those going. And then we will uh, add additional transportation technology as the years go by, as well as the high school track replacement. So. Back out there. So as you can see, there's we were able to really utilize our bond funds um, and and get a lot more out of those than what we ever expected to. And we're hoping to add to those accomplishments as the years go by. Um, again, our operations team, CMS, did a great job in in really 
um, doing a lot of extra things to get us uh, to that point. Uh, CMS Willowbrook was able to get some bids uh, that came way in under uh, what we thought they would. And that provided a lot of the funded funds that we were able to spread throughout the district. And our operations teams are constantly uh, upgrading our facilities from the inside and the out to uh, help to make the most of our uh, community's bonds that they passed back in 2016. Jeff, did you have anything to add on that that I missed? There's the list is long. I, I know I missed a ton of things, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of what they were able to accomplish for us um, over the last, especially the last two years. Uh, there's been a big, big change in the district and, and really something to be proud of. Thank you, and Ms. Tippins. I think it's all. Okay, to the board, do you have any questions or comments? Nope. Again, um, my um, just huge compliments, especially uh, to our operations team for the many of the things that you saw there. They have actually done the floors. They've actually painted the walls. They've actually put in the new lights and the new lighting. We are very fortunate to have, we have a very small team. It's a very tiny team, but they do great work. And so we've been able to do a lot of cleanup projects that um, I would say one of the things that was probably most needed when I got here was to begin to repair the things that had not been repaired for some time and not had funds set aside for that. And so we're very fortunate. Interest rates were good to us. Interest rates have been very good to us. But CMS has done an excellent job of bringing in good bids to our project, excellent bids to our project, uh, and bidders that we have been really pleased with their work. So it's not that we took anything less. I think we have an excellent job. And I think you will see that, especially as you enter the four or five center, or if you happen to visit any of the elementaries that we've already renovated. Um, CMS has done a great job in working those projects and bringing them in under budget so that we're able to do all of the little things like renovate some science rooms, renovate some old science rooms into art rooms. We've just done some magical switching of rooms and a lot of that is due to both operations and to the efforts of CMS. Uh, so we're real pleased with what we've done thus far. Our project list is big, it's long, and uh, of course we'd like to get a lot more um, we have a few more that we think we can cover, um, but soon we will need a bond issue to place that next, next school to alleviate growth and overcrowding issues that Deer Creek will quickly have. And it's just due to rapid growth. We're very blessed that people want to come to Deer Creek. They want to bring their children here to go to school. Uh, but with that comes those growing pains where we need to constantly be looking at what next and how will it alleviate overcrowding in all of our schools? And so it's usually a chess game. Uh, as with this project, a lot of choices weren't, um, maybe some original ways of how we thought to do things. But in the end, I think we've come out with some excellent projects. One of the things that I cannot wait for you to see in the fourth and fifth grade center is we actually truly have our own event center that will host any banquet. It can hold 750 people which I believe that means even for football, we've got football covered right here in Deer Creek. Um, and so we have a place to go and it's a beautiful place that features the history of Deer Creek on the walls. So uh, the pictures will probably not be up until late October or November. Uh, some paper pieces are up there in their place for right now, but the history from 1900 to present will be featured on the photo panel walls throughout the big commons area that you would go in through to go into the banquet center. So I'm excited about what that's going to do for the Deer Creek community and the opportunities that will afford to many, many, many groups in terms of holding functions right here instead of having to find places and rent places. So hopefully you'll be pleased again with how we have multipurposed many, many of the things that we have. Uh, there is room on this land to do a flip school, a school of the same size. And as we have done some of the road construction in, that was taken into consideration at that time. So uh, those of you that were on the board will also note that you actually have land for the next three projects. Uh, and it took us two years to find land. That was a really difficult thing for us. Uh, when we were down looking at the Southwest 
corner and when you looked at the central east or or northeast uh, the land price is always before it was 500 500 thousand or less and a lot of it was donated and uh to get 40 acres in the southwest or in central or northeast was going to be 12 million dollars it was priced per foot uh, and we came in far under and due to the savings on our projects, not only did we come under on this project, we have the land for the next project and then we were able to purchase two more pieces of land in the kind of central and then north uh, west corners. So we feel like we've, we, that's going to be a legacy that we are leaving to those that follow uh, is that you actually have some land to work with uh, as we begin to do our next project. So all in all, very excited about what we've been able to finish and accomplish and some of the things that we've been able to put out. Um, band has new instruments. A lot of new instruments have been afforded through this bond issue. Our athletic fields, as you know, we have new turf and we have the signs and we have it both in softball and baseball as well. So there are many, many groups that have benefited from these projects and that will be the plan going forward as we begin to plan that next school is how can we best serve all the needs uh, with the limited funding that we have. So again, any questions before we move on? What a, what a hard work a lot of people to get us to where we are. And I think that you and James and CMS have stretched our bond money so strategically and so well that we've got a lot of extra stuff for the money that we had and I'm going to, we want to thank you all for that too. Yes. Thank you. We're, we're pleased and <coughs> but most excited for you all to get to enter our new building and see what was accomplished even while we saved money and were able to do other things. So we have one final, final report for this evening and that is from Athletics. Uh, Mr. Bays, if you will join us, we would love to hear from you. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right, good. All right, uh, first of all, um, summer workouts legally could start June 1st, but we delayed the start of workouts to June 8th um, so we could get our pr uh, protective products and get our uh, education protocol out to our coaches. Um, just so you'll know, with the help of Linus, we were able to purchase uh, the following uh, things for summer camp or summer workouts, uh, thermometers for daily temperature checks, masks for our coaches, hand sanitizer for our athletes, gloves, sanitizing liquid, and towels uh, for cleanup between groups and after each workout. So. With her help, I, I felt pretty good about um, how how we were stocked uh, for the start of, of summer workouts. <clears throat> so with that, we did start um, with phase one on June 8th. And for the first two weeks, uh, June 8th through the 12th and 15th through the 19th, all of our teams worked outside uh, and in a no-touch environment. And also, that was fall sports only for the first week uh, so that we could get them up and running since they were going to be the first to compete in the fall. Then week two, uh, other sports such as uh, both boys and girls basketball, baseball, uh, started workouts following the same protocol of outside no touch. And since we hadn't had no positive tests, the first two weeks, we decided to go ahead and continue that um, the, the week of the 20, 22nd through the 26th as well. Uh, in that time, we had no positive tests. Uh, we did have some secondary exposures. Um, and as a result, we did quarantine those athletes and coaches. We had four coaches that, that uh, fell under that criteria. And, and all of those coaches and athletes were quarantined until uh, July 6th. Uh, then the week of the 29th through the third, uh, it was actually the 29th through July 3rd, uh, we scaled it back to two days and we only had two groups that even worked out that week. So for the most part, it was a, a full week of break. Everything was shut down July 1st through the 5th. And it was during that time that we did have some positive tests. Um, we had uh, two football and one cheer but they were all uh, had been away from, uh, you know, the campus for 
more than a week. Um, there was travel involved camps and, and then when they came back, they tested positive. Uh, we were contacted about it and, and they were quarantined and anybody, any other athletes that came in contact with them during that time were quarantined as well. Uh, we came back on July 6th. That was phase two. We did start allowing uh, groups to go inside. Uh, football was able to use uh, both weight rooms, 16 in the big weight room, eight in the small. Fortunately, we had big uh, uh, industrial garage doors that we could lift up and get great circulation in there. So it was almost like working uh, lifting outside. So I felt really good about that. Our coaches did a, a tremendous job in that setup, and, and we've continued that uh, this week as well. Um, when we came back on July 6th, I made the decision after talking with Cabin and everything that we we did uh, go back to fall sports only. We wanted to do everything that we possibly could um, to get things, you know, across the finish line so that we'd be able to start competition in the fall. Some of the things that we've done in that time, we'll, we'll, you know, implement with our winter and spring sports as well to hopefully give them the same opportunity uh, to compete. So with that, overall, I felt, you know, very, you know, blessed uh, with, with how things have gone. Uh, we did have the three positive tests, but being away from campus, um, we've been able to, you know, control that as, as best we can. And, we just continue to, to, to move forward. Um, we can actually begin full practices this Wednesday. Softball is the only group that will start practices this week. Volleyball will come in next week on the 20th. Um, cross country will start around July 27th, sometime in that time frame. And then football will be eligible to start practices on August the 10th. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, for me at this time. I have a, a question, Bill. How has it been with the um, heat and, and watching the athletes with the heat? And do we have athletic trainers now on site to help manage we, that? Yeah, that that's a good question. That One of the things that we, we, we had spotty, the old contract did not allow for uh, trainers to, to, to be contracted during the month of June. So that kind of contributed to uh, our approach in June along with the COVID. But then starting July 1, our new contract starts, and it's a 12-month contract, which will be great for next year. But they've been on campus since uh, July 1, um, and uh, the coaches are getting to know them, and, and they've been available to us. Uh, there have been some days where there's been um, – we, we've anticipated – excessive uh, temperature or uh, uh, heat index. And so we've, we've um, shortened the timeline for completion up to 1130. Um, so, you know, so far that's, that's been a good practice for us as well. So I, I feel good about the things that we have. Uh, our two new trainers are Chandra and Josh, and um, we we're hooking them up with their, um, uh, facilities and and they they've been on hand josh was there every day last week and i think josh and chandra will both be there uh every day this week but everything's been really positive our coaches have done a great job and and they've even contacted me ahead of time about you know trying to get done a little bit earlier so we can make sure that our athletes are are out of the you know the the excessive heat of the day all right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Bill, thank you. Bill has done an incredible job of working with our coaches. Our coaches have done a marvelous job. As he mentioned, our first level con contraction of COVID uh, was at camps and things away from the school site and was not brought back into the school site. So we've been very, very fortunate uh, that it was identified and never brought in. Um, our secondary ones, people were notified because they had been around people who had been COVID, around people who had been around people who were COVID. So um, we did do those quarantine pieces 
until we knew for sure that they didn't had not contracted COVID from being around people who were around people. So again, our real incidents were secondary and we were fortunate that that did not bring it into our campus. Um, but with the upticks, uh, we remain ever cautious and ever vigilant in terms of temperature checks and a variety of things. Our community has been very good to communicate with us. Uh, we really, really appreciate that from families and we ask that you continue to let us know when you think there might have been an exposure so that we can again contact families and make sure everyone's aware of what's happening day to day. Um, again, thank you, Bill. And we appreciate what's been happening. We appreciate that we've been able to get back active with our athletes and we'll continue to progressively do that. Um, if there are no further questions, Dr. Keene, I'm gonna turn it back to you for business items. I have a question. Okay, thank I have a question. Yeah. Are we gonna do an enrollment? Yeah. enrollment? Next month, we're doing that next month. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Renette? Yes, enrollment will be next month. Uh, we'll have a better picture next month. So we're putting that off to next time. Hey, I'm sorry, I have one more question too. On the, on the athletes that were quarantined, are they being tested or are they going getting tested on their own? Or how is that being handled? Are you talking about the, the secondary exposures or, or those that tested positive? Uh, the secondary exposures. They're not required to test as long as they quarantine for the 14 days and then have seven. And at the end of that, you know, show no signs for 72 hours, then they're allowed to come back without a test. Okay, good questions. Any more questions? And Renette, the only other thing I wanted to add is that we'll continue the exact same protocol that we've used this summer up until the first day of school. So even though we start practice, for example, with softball on Wednesday, all of those sports, we will follow the same exact protocol up until the first day of school. And then we'll have to make adjustments because, you know, the environment will be different because we have, we have students back on, on campus uh, and everything, but we will continue that same protocol till then. Okay. We appreciate that and appreciate uh, the communication between you and your staff, Bill. Thank you. Dr. Keene. All right, thank you, Renette. I'd also, I'd like to add just back to Kenny and the three retirees that, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll talk to people about Deer Creek and they talk about the big buildings out here and, and how much, you know, what's going on. And you kind of explain to them school bonds and issues and how students are funded and kind of explain to them it's really not how it works just because we got big buildings. but. These, these people are kind of the heart and soul of this place and the, the people that kind of keep it running and keep it going and they will be missed. And, you know, they've touched thousands of uh, lives of families and kids and um, they will be missed and hopefully we'll be able to replace them, but it'll be tough. So, all right, let's go to business item F, which it doesn't look like there's any business items. No. Okay. So the next is executive session. Uh, the Board of Education will consider and may vote to convene an executive session. Uh, number one, Oklahoma Statute, Title 25, Section 307B, 1, 2, and 7, discuss employment as listed on the personnel schedule. Do we need executive session? Okay. So we're not leaving uh, to the executive, so we don't have to return. So uh, we'll go to J. Uh, discussion and possible vote on superintendent's recommendations concerning employment as listed on the personnel schedule and support salary schedule as amended. Do I have a motion or questions or mo No, do I have a motion? Sorry. Uh, second. I'll second. Barnes. Yes. Lay. Yes. Keen. Yes. Naves. Naves. You're muted, Andy. Andy, you're muted. Sorry. Yes. Bamford. Yes. Motion carries five zero. I guess as a deputy secretary, can you still motion for adjournment, Danny? Oh heck yeah. Can we do before we do that? <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. Uh -huh. Have we, uh, because we may not know if this, if we're going to have to keep this meeting virtual, have we explored um, the options of 
having parents being able to ask questions. Have we thought about how maybe this needs, the format might need to be changed a little bit? Renette, go ahead with the, I mean, it's, we kind of find the OSB a guidelines, right? Right. Right now? Right. Currently, and we can certainly uh, call and talk to them again. Actually, the, the guidelines of how this agenda is set was set both, uh, we went through Laura Holmes, our attorney, as well as the school board association, but we can certainly look into it further. Uh, but uh, as always, I would say to parents, please contact your teacher, contact the school principal, contact us here in the central office, contact board members who will in turn share that information with us. There are many, many ways that you have used that I would encourage you still to use. And that is to give us your questions ahead of time and let us know and we'll try to see if we can't answer them or make them into agenda items where we do answer them on our board agendas. So uh, first and foremost, the best way is to start at the root level and start at where your question occurs. And so I always encourage people talk to the coach, talk to the teacher, when school's in session. Talk to the principals because many of you have questions about how that site is going to run for this year. Uh, principals will be returning to their offices next week on Monday, as well as our secretary. So there will be people there to answer your phone calls and answer your questions. And if we can't answer those there, uh, which is the best place to get that answer, uh, then call us if that answer does not work for you. And, and someone in our office will handle that call as well. So parents, please, please do as always. We also have email and feel free to use email and phone call both. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think we're all, all of us as board members are available anytime, email, text, phone call, and we get those all the time. And uh, I think we represent the kids and the parents. So I, I think... Hopefully, we're not going to be doing this virtual next time. I, I, I think with us going back to um, open meetings, however, if we still have a big surge, we might not still have to have a lot of people in the boardroom at a time or mask or uh, physical distance away. But hopefully, this is the last time, Lori. This, this is hard to do for all of us. I can't imagine how the traders have done it since March. You guys are amazing. So. But I, I think I think anybody can get a hold of them time. I know they do me, so it's fun. And I direct them to Danny. <laughs> okay, well I'm gonna move for adjournment of the first meeting of the reign of Dr. Keene. Second that. Barnes? Yes. Neves? Yes. Keene? Yes. Clay, yes. Bamford? Yes. Motion carries five zero. Time is sorry, don't know what time is. Seven forty. Seven thirty-seven. Right, Seven thirty-seven. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Have a good, have a good night. Thank See you, you later. Bye. Be safe. Yeah. Thank you.